Before I start my talk, let me give you a question. What was the most important thing you did when you were 17? Well, at the age of 17, most students in Vietnam were thriving on extracurricular activities and academics. Well, I did not want to do any of them. And in fact, I wanted to escape the world. I've always been a silent kid, which means that I prefer listening rather than speaking. And during my childhood, I've listened to so many criticisms about the way I looked, about the way I spoke, the way I had fun, and enjoyed my own life. I soon went into depression and wanted to escape the world. It felt like being rotten inside out. It felt like there were no colors reflected on my vision and no purpose of living in this world. So whenever I came home from my high school, I would curl into my bed and go to sleep to pass my time. Until one day, I typed the word corgis on YouTube. And for those of you who don't really know what a corgi is, it kind of looked like this. What I found back then was a video and I clicked in. And my first thought was, hmm, this guy is kind of handsome. So, for that reason, I tuned in for a couple of days and I found out that this guy had some aspects that I kind of admire. He had a six pack. He went to the top university in the world, which was Cornell University. And he had a dog. He even cooked for himself and lived alone. And in my hometown, we'd say that a full pack. So, soon the vlog became the highlight of my day. And I felt peaceful watching it after a day full of bad experiences in high school. I felt peaceful because at that very moment, I knew that that was the person that I'm going to become with that kind of lifestyle. Because of the vlog, I had the courage to get on with my life and I soon thrived on extracurricular activities and academics also. And I went to the top university in Vietnam no long after. But there is another aspect of the vlog that intrigues me so much. You might not always see somebody organizing a birthday party for dogs in my hometown. And I was so interested in the fact that he paid so, so, so much detail in raising the dog or sending the dog to school. The dog person inside me was woken up and I did not realize how hard it was to raise a dog until one year later that I had first seen his dog. I got my own dog, which I named Nya. It was by raising Nya that I realized that animals do really have a heart. For example, whenever I come home, Nya would run all the way from upstairs to the door, tail waving and cannot wait to jump on my lap to greet me. Or whenever I'm laying in my bed, Nya would come right next to me, whimpering and wanting to get into my bed, which often results in this. So after a year of raising Nya, I came to a conclusion that my mental health really improved in fact, it improved significantly because every day I knew that there was always something waiting for me to come home, loving me and caring for me once I got home. So I appreciated him a lot because at that very moment, I knew who I was going to become and who was the companion of mine on this journey. But as I was raising Nya, there was one problem that was always popping up in my head. Can you make a guess? I was afraid of losing him because of the dog meat industry in Vietnam. Every year, Vietnam consumes 5 million dogs for meat. Animal kidnapping has been happening in Vietnam. And many, many, many dogs and cats have been kidnapped from families in Vietnam. Also, altercation between dog kidnappers and the family members who were just trying to protect the pet 
happened, and some even led to death. When Nya and his brother was going to have their very first birthday party, we were so excited to go to the supermarket and prepare things for them for the birthday party. And then one day, I woke up to this very bad news. Her mother, Fok, was nowhere to be found. Fok was a loving and caring dog that we loved so much, and the fact that we could not find her anywhere made us feel really sad and hopeless. I figured now is the time we do not stay silent, but to raise some questions. And my question here is, how can we solve this kind of problem? Because we believe that everybody here is equally important to realize that animals do really have a heart. And these issues are becoming much, much more dangerous than you ever imagined. So there are two solutions we'd love you to remember right now. First, right here, right at this moment, when you are watching this video, Please remember the last meal you had that had dog meat or cat meat. In case you don't remember them, ask your parent to recall that meal and recall what was the source that you got it from. If it came from the market or somewhere unreliable, it might have come from a family that is still remembering the meal you had. So in the future, if you ever see dog or cat meat, Please avoid that as much as possible because somebody out there may be missing that meal. The second thing is that we also believe in a more loving and generous generation towards the animals. So if you ever see a young person or a child that is not lucky enough to realize the animal's heart, please tell them to not be afraid. And this quote, to you, a dog or a cat may just be an animal, but to them, you may be their whole world. To wrap things up, I'd love to send you the last quote. And in the future, if you ever get stressed out, depressed or unhappy, we believe you should get a dog or a cat and help save them in Vietnam. Thank you.